Hey. 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 Today's hey, video hey, is hey. gonna be nice, relaxing. Uh, yeah. just okay. Just a walk in the park, you know. Okay. Suck, bitch. We're looking at murderabilia. Mm. Sorry, guys. Must have been uh, something in my throat. Now, I just want to throw this out here. I'm a dark ass bitch. Look, I mean, look at me. I I'm drinking Red Bull. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an edge lord. Basically, I look up <laughs> crime stories all day and I just deep dive into it and I fall into loopholes of crime. So that's why I'm making this video. For my last video, I got a $200 dark memorabilia mystery box. And for Ooh, this nice. video. A memorabilia. You can actually buy this shit? Like, where did he buy it? Oh my gosh. Support me on Patreon, and maybe someday I'll buy one of these and unbox it on the channel for you guys. That's that's where the money kind of goes to. It goes to the channel and everything. So if you like this channel and you want to support it and you want to see me do shit like this or paranormal investigating and stuff like that, support me on Patreon. But, uh, dude, I'd be down for this. I, I really would. I, I mean, I, uh, let, me, let me face it. Like, I don't know if I'd keep anything in the box. I'm not sure. I'd probably literally just sell it again, but... Man, could it, it would be interesting to unbox it on live camera. That that that's something I didn't know you could actually purchase things like that. I got a five hundred dollar dark memorabilia mystery box. Wow! Now, I got a lot of comments on my last video that were saying that my mystery box is fake, but I promise you that this is legit. Oh yeah. This is where I got the box from. You know, whenever I was a little kid, Dark me and my friend were like 12, and he told me always to take off my shirt like this. Because the women, the women like it more. First, I have to get women to like me. Oh, yeah. Who was that, BTK? <laughs> Walk around with a BTK shirt? Peep the drip. Yeah, I'm not, I cannot step outside with this on. <laughs> All right, so in this box, I haven't seen anything in this box yet, okay? I promise. In the box, there's usually a little note that tells me what everything is, so I just need to look for that. I got the paper. It's really hard to make this a fun, okay. happy YouTube video when you're dealing with a bunch of people that are murderers. <laughs> okay, guys, it's time to be serious. You'd be surprised on how many people really, really enjoy this kind of content. And I'm not gonna lie, I'd be a liar if I said I didn't either. Now, do I support serial killers? No, I do not. But I do actually, I, I'm fascinated by the whole subject matter, you know? It's kind of one of those fascination things, like aliens, uh, paranormal and stuff like that. Serial killers kind of, not really, well, they kind of, I guess, in a sense, are somewhere in the same, along the same kind of category. Not like initially, but like somewhere along the lines, you know, we'll be, we'll be talking about ghosts and aliens, you know. What do you think of serial killer documentaries? It's kind of one of those things, kind of those creepy kind of things that you just talk about. I just got done reading the paper. It looks like we have a couple items from Bob Berdella. Robert Berdella was known as the Kansas City Butcher. He sexually tortured and killed at least six men in the 80s. When he was 19, I don't know he if I've ever heard of this drugs, guy. He was an alcoholic and he got kicked out of college for killing a dog. One thing that's creepy to me wow. is that he helped out his neighborhood crime watch. These killers always try to look like the good guy. John Wayne Gacy, aka the Killer Clown, was known as an upstanding citizen who engaged in politics and fun. I know him, I know him. The first lady of the United States took this photo of Gacy shaking his hand. Little did she know, he's already killed 29 people. Ed Kemper casually hung out with police at a bar called the Jury Room, where they would talk about his own crimes and the police had no idea. Goes to show that you can't trust anyone. So nope. back to Robert. His neighbor stepped outside one day and saw a naked man with a dog collar on Robert's porch. He immediately called the police and then Robert was arrested. Robert had a fascination with injecting bleach, drugs, and other things into people's eyes and throats. He died of a heart attack in prison. And uh, I have a few of his things. Let me get the box out. Nice. This must be the wrong He died. One. The fact that he Here died. Nice. This is a map from Robert's home. My fingerprints are now touching his. Little uh, ripped right there. Smells old. What if he used this map to plan out his murders? Maybe he was trying to find a place to kill. Maybe he was trying to find a place to run away. This happened in the 80s. Maybe. I don't even remember Maybe. the last time I've seen a map like this. I, I don't know if, I, don't, I feel like stuff like this, even knowing, yeah, it, I guess it could be looked at as suspicious, is probably just something the guy just had laying around his house, more than likely. I mean, literally, they probably just took all of his belongings, which it could have included pencils in his pencil drawer, and just been like, oh, you know what, let's send it, let's put this in a, a dark memorabilia, a memorabilia box for like, you know, the $200 one, and you get a pencil from this guy's house. I feel like it's more along the lines of that. But that is pretty, pretty creepy.
this. I think this is a map, map of Canada. This map was in a serial killer's home. What do you guys think it was used for? Comment down below. Maybe nothing. Wow. Maybe nothing. This is so cool. This is a TV guide cover from Bob's home. It looks like there's a note on it. I can't seem to read that, but if you guys know what it says, comment down below. Aside from this yeah. being owned by a murderer, I think it's actually pretty cool. It's really vintage, and I've never seen something like it. All right, guys, on to the next one. Me being a movie guy, I also think that was kind of cool and kind of neat, because I do like vintage stuff. I, I don't know if you guys can tell. I have a couple vintage things in the background. No way. No way. This is what? a jigsaw blade that was taken into evidence from Robert's home. This is his blade. I'm getting chills right now. Should I touch it? You're going to. I have to touch it. This blade was in evidence, so hopefully it wasn't used for anything bad. You never know. I don't know if I'd be touching the Our next blade part of it, but okay. Jess person. Also known as the happy face killer. Over the course he of looks five like a years, happy guy. Keith murdered several women all over the United States because he was a traveling truck driver. He dumped the bodies in multiple states, so it was really hard for the police to understand what was going on. That is until other people are taking credit for his crimes. So what does he do? He wrote confessions in public places and sent his crimes to the media. And he always signed his anonymous letters the with the smiley face. face. The crazy thing about killers is that they want attention so bad. And a lot of the times, that's the reason why they get caught. But this guy got caught when he killed his own girlfriend. The only victim he personally knew. This is an Fucked envelope up. that he wrote on. Fucked Unfortunately, up. there's nothing inside of it. But hey, we have his autograph. Not the autograph to be proud of, though. The next it, no, killer is no. Kenneth Bianchi, also known as the Hillside Strangler. He raped and killed 12 people with his adoptive cousin. How do you even get to the point where you ask your cousin if you want to murder someone with them? I'm sure that their family Thanksgiving was very awkward the year after it happened. So they went on this killing spree in the late 70s. They posed as policemen to lure in their victims. You Holy shit, I've heard of these guys. Holy shit, the second one he said he, they dress like policemen to lure people in. I've heard of them. Wow, I did not know they were gonna be brought up in this video. Okay, well, ooh. You know, it's crazy because a lot of killers wanna be cops, wanna be in the military. Isn't they that get crazy? Into politics, they're part of Neighborhood Watch. Is it because they want authority or they wanna be seen as a good person? What do you guys think? They usually dump the bodies on the hills. Easy answer, both. We actually had a situation here in our uh, town that I'm living in right now. We had a situation here about three to four years ago where a cop actually exposed himself in front of a minor. And we never would have thought that this guy was ever capable of something like that. And it just blew our fucking minds. Everybody in town was shocked. And it was talked about for quite a while, actually. And it blew my mind, too, because I actually used to talk to this guy. I used to talk to this guy. Me and Michael, actually, if you guys remember Michael, me and him were actually trash digging at the time as kids. Looking for stuff to build stuff with, right? And we were, like, looking to people's trash, things that they didn't want and stuff. And he drove by, and he asked us a couple questions. And he was a very nice guy at the time. But then, we little did we know, we found out a little bit later that how how crazy, how how out of nowhere this act was. And it just blew our minds completely, so... I remember sending the, the, the newspaper report to to my friend Michael, and he was just fucking, he didn't know what to say. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and continue. Sorry, I just wanted to say, mention that really quick. And that's how we got his name, the Hillside Strangler. Here is a letter with his signature and address. Damn, I'm like Blue's Clues right now. But I'm, I'm like the Steve that helps you learn about murder. We just got a letter. Wonder who it's from. Kenneth Bianchi, also known as the Hillside Strangler. Unfortunately, nothing in the nothing envelope, in it, but, but still. yet again, we have his signature. Still, it yeah. It would have been cool to have a uh, autograph from Justin Timberlake, but nope, it's the uh, Hillside Strangler. In the 80s, there was an actor named Lloyd Avery. He was in the hit movie, Boys in the Hood which is actually one of my favorite movies. So I guess he always played the role of a gangster, but in real life, he wasn't a gangster at all. And this caused him to have an identity crisis. He started to keep a gun on him at all times, and he was eventually arrested for the murder of two men. But he's not even the murderer that we're talking about today. He got the worst cellmate that he could possibly have, and that cellmate was Kevin Roby, who was sent to prison for the sexual assault and murder of his sister. And he did it to please Satan. I guess he didn't please Satan enough because he ended up killing Lloyd. He also mutilated his body. No fucking way. 
I, I've never seen the Friday movies. I know who that guy is. I never knew this. This is kind of mind-blowing to me. Like, I just talked about a mind-blowing story. Now, this is even more mind-blowing. I did not even know this. What the fuck? All wow. for a sacrifice okay. to Satan. Lloyd was very unlucky in that situation because he got the worst cellmate he could probably possibly have. In this box, I have a hand tracing of Kevin Roby. Like I said, it's a mystery box, so I don't even know what it looks like yet. Wow. Those are some massive tell hands. That he pleases Satan. Satanic Christ, aka Kevin Roby. It's like a fucking so it looks like kindergarten he drawing from hell. Satanic Christ. And these are the tracings of his actual hands. Either his ring finger is a little chody right there, or he has a ring on it. Let me know what you guys think. Actually, that's not his ring finger. And I don't think you're allowed to have piercings in prison. So his finger just must be Chody. The next killer is Edward wow. Spritzer. Edward was a part of the Ripper that was crazy. Crew, or the Chicago Rippers. They were a satanic cult and organized crime group. They were suspected in the disappearance of 18 women, all in one year. They would kill, torture, and sometimes eat their victims. They would cut off their victims' boobs and put them in a box, and one of them said that at one point they had 15 boobs in the box. One of the men in the group has recently gotten out of prison. You could have passed him in the grocery store, and you would have never known. <laughs> Think how many strangers- He should have been in prison for a life. Fucking lucky douchebag. That you pass by every day, and they are not good people. Think how many houses that you passed by in your life, mm -hmm. and someone was held in the basement. They say that you passed yep. by 16 murderers in your lifetime. Or it could be your next door neighbor. You never know. This is a handwritten letter from Isn't that crazy to think and about? the letter is in this one. Here's his name. Uh, a lot of you guys don't know this, but I mean, you might know this because if you guys stick around my channel and stuff, I sometimes tell you my own personal stories. When I was a kid, there was, we used to live right across the street from the school. So we would just walk to the school every day. My mom would be standing on the front porch watching, watching me and my brother walk to school. Well, we did not know this, and I did not know this until about two years ago when my mom finally actually told us about it. And apparently, there was a guy who was watching us every single day going uh, from our house to the school. And we didn't know about it, of course. And she asked one of the police officers in the town to take a look into this guy because she felt uncomfortable letting this man watch her kids go to school every day. And so when he came back to her with some very interesting evidence, she was very surprised and actually had the police to tell him to stop watching the kids go to school because it was making the neighbors feel uncomfortable. But the guy was a convicted sex offender. Yeah. I, I blew my mind. Blew my mind when she told us that. I'm Edward Spritzer. Oh my God. It's like the Declaration of Independence. This is to a girl named Heather. So I'm guessing that it's a love interest. I don't want to read the whole thing, but if you guys yeah, want to read it, I'll put it right here. So I've read here and there, and this letter is a roller coaster. He talks about being circumcised, getting sexual, shaving his garden, if you know what I'm saying, yeah. and depression. So if you guys want to read it, check it out. No, I don't need to. Fuck that. Let me know if you guys find anything interesting in it. Our next guy is Rod Farrell. He was a member of a gang of teenagers called the Vampire Clan. What's up with all these satanic clans? Yeah. I wonder if that went out of style because I never hear anything about nope. satanic clans anymore. Not anymore. There's also a lot less serial killers nowadays because it's a lot easier to get caught. There is cameras everywhere nowadays and no one hitchhikes anymore. <laughs> but back in the day, it was a big thing. Also, I have this theory. Mass shootings are going down because of quarantine, which I'm pretty sure is a fact already. There's no get togethers in public where it could happen. But everyone's at their house, which is perfect for a serial killer. Could this be the new age of serial killers? Stay safe, guys. But yeah, vampire. I, I don't think it's the new age for serial killers. As a matter of fact, I, um, I think I know what you're getting at with that. But I, I think I think what it is is just a bunch of dumbasses who think they're big shots. And they'll think they'll become big shots if they do something like that. It's just a bunch of dumbasses trying to take advantage of the publicity. I mean, literally, there's two sides. I, 
this is an interesting view, and this is I, I might get to it after the video. I think I'll get out get to it after the video. I'll Clarence. talk about it. He told people that he was a 500 year old vampire, and his name was Versago or Visago. One bad bitch and she do what I say so Got a vampire and his name is Versego In 1998, aka my birth year He killed a couple Becoming the youngest person in the United States on death row He was 17 And the victims were also his friend's parents And then he ran away with her and I believe a couple other people And she described her home life as hell Here we have an envelope Fucking and idiots. letter from him He wrote this letter on 420. He dots his eyes with X's and low key, it looks kind of dope. He also puts little emojis in his sentences and those look pretty cool too. Oh my God, his signature, his signature is, why is it dope? It says Rod and then the, the cross art goes down into an upside down cross. I also found a never before open Rod Farrell letter in the box, but I decided to keep it how it is, sealed and never opened. Yep. That's pretty cool. This man is nothing to adore, but how he writes is pretty interesting. Last but not least. No, he's no, no. Here no, is none a of them childhood are. artwork by Rod Farrell, the vampire Versago. This is art that he made when he was a child. So if he was 500 years old when he did his crime, he was probably like 490 years old. Rod. Oh. Rod E. Rod E. At first Roddy. I was pretty confused, but I believe that this is a football field. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's the goal. There's the goal. This is a giant signature. I really don't know what to do with these things after I make a video with them. From my last video and this video, I probably have over 20 killers items. I have to be haunted by now. I have to be. I don't even care though. I'm homies with ghosts. Hey, what's good, bro? But honestly, guys, I don't know what to do with all this. Am Not I going to put it on? Not with them ghosts, though. You don't want to be homies with fucking that freak. My refrigerator? No. Am I going to hang it on the wall? No. Maybe I should give it away to you guys. Comment down below what you guys think I should do. What the f*** was that? Okay, so kind of diving into what I was about to say. I was about to say... Hold on. One sec. My lighting is a bit fucked. Okay, so what I was about to say, I know that's pretty fucking bright, so I do apologize, but what I was about to say was, I feel like there's two sides I'd look at. Th serial killer stuff, documentaries, movies, TV shows are becoming a lot more popular now than they ever were, and that's because a lot of people find this kind of stuff interesting. I'm one of those people, and I'm not someone who goes around and defy killers. I don't say what they do is good. I don't. I never acknowledge anything that they do. I, I mostly only kind of attack them and go after them and call them pieces of shit because that's exactly what they are. They're pieces of shit human beings. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a fan of them. I don't care if you... They're pieces of shit human beings. And if you can't see that, you're, there's probably something wrong with you. And I'm just being honest because uh, there's there's really some fandoms for serial killers. And there are a lot of people who really do love serial killers. I know... I've heard of several people having huge crushes on Ted Bundy. I've heard of people having crushes on Jeffrey Dahmer. And I'm just like... Why? Why would you find them attractive at all? Like, at all? Do you not know what they've done? Do you, do you not? It's like, do, do, do any of these things, like, do you think these are not bad things that people have done? I just, it kind of always surprises me, to each their own, but it always surprises me when someone actually admits that they have a crush on a serial killer. But I look at the this as a good thing and a bad thing. On the good side, you are learning about how vicious and how cruel people can be. This is something I feel like at some point in your life you need to kind of learn and understand that humans are not perfect beings. They're, they can be evil. They can be cruel. And I think that's very important for people to learn. On the other hand, I'm hoping that the psychos don't use this as excuses to go around and kill people. That's another big concern I have with shows and, and movies and glorifying these killers is that there's some people out there who, who, who probably think that this is, this is an awakening, right? This is something that, oh, finally someone who understands me, right? And they're going to be looking at the show like, I I'm just like Jeffrey. Maybe, if, you know, maybe people will understand me. No, if you, if, you, if you think the way Jeffrey Dahmer thinks and if you think the way that Ted Bundy or, or, or John Wayne Gacy ever thought, you need to seek help. Simple as that. You need to seek help. There's no shame in it. There's no shame in seeking help before something can trigger you. Don't be like them dumbasses. Be better. 
be fucking better. It's it's not only a way to obviously avoid people like that. Like if you think they're showing signs kind of like that, then it's be probably better just to stay away from them. Don't trust a stranger. That's always a key. Never trust a stranger, no matter how convincing they are. Fuck, Dracula was a decent looking human being and a very charismatic and very charming person because that's how he lured people in. So just be smart. Just be smart about it. Uh, some guy messages you on the internet and asks, you know, for your phone number, or should we hang out sometime? Be cautious. Always be cautious. Doesn't matter if you tell a friend. Doesn't matter if you tell your parents. Don't do it. Simple as that. But anyways, guys, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I'm sorry that light is very bright. I don't know why it's as bright as it is. One sec. Oh, okay, that's better. That's a lot better. Okay, uh, comment down below. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Uh, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel for the channel. Share the content. It doesn't mean a lot. And until next time, guys, do keep it retro and do take care.